Hi, I'm Florian Richou and I will show you in this video how to use Ghost to model and solve your own combinatorial optimization problems. So uh, let's start by the boring stuff. So don't worry, I just have a couple of slides uh, to first show what is uh, Ghost philosophy and then we will deep dive into a concrete example. So I will show you a demo uh, how to model your own constraint optimization problem then how to model an error function optimization problem and for the problem we will tackle you will see that we just need to change one line uh, to go from a COP to an IFOP. Um, once you have a model on how to modify it, for instance by adding a new constraint to uh, model a new problem. And finally how to make the search parallel. Alright, so uh, Ghost philosophy has three main points. So, the first point is uh, Ghost has a, a, a strict separation between modeling and solving. So you, the user, will just have to model the problem without knowing how the solver is working exactly. It's uh, easy to use, so it's a C++ library. Uh, so that has really been designed for uh, developers who don't know necessarily uh, constraint programming. And it's very fast, so it's aimed uh, to solve real-time uh, combinatorial problems uh, within, it depends on the problem for sure, but uh, within a couple of uh, milliseconds or more. Here uh, is the UML class diagram of Ghost. Uh, in a range, you have the classes that concern everything to build uh, or to declare a model, the model of a problem. And in blue, it's a, a Ghost classes uh, to, to solve the problem. And you have here in purple, all classes that the user need to uh, write himself or herself um, to uh, declare his or her problem. So you need three things to declare a combinatorial accumulation problem. You need variables, uh, you need domains, that is a set of values that your variables can take, and you need constraints. And if it's an optimization problem, you also need an objective function. This is not necessary for a decision problem, so yes, no problems. Uh, but if you are working with an optimization problem, so you are looking to maximize or minimize your value, then you need an objective function. So for variables and domains actually are included into variables, the user don't need to do anything, uh, no need to uh, make a class that inherit from, from this class because a variable is simply a variable always. So there is nothing special to do. But uh, a user needs to uh, declare constraints. So uh, to model a concrete problem, for instance, uh, the user will need to uh, declare constraint 1, 2, and 3 that inherits from the abstract class constraint. And um, with the need to uh, redefine the error function. Right. And same for the objective function. You have an objective function if you uh, are working with an optimization problem, then you need to declare uh, your own objective function class that will inherit from the abstract objective function. Right, and then you need uh, to declare your, uh, to write your class to build uh, your, your, your model uh, in order to declare what your variables are and also what the, are their domain, what your constraints are and what your objective function is if you need one. And that's it. And for the uh, blue classes, so all classes that are um, uh, linked to, to the solving part of Ghost, you need nothing to do, absolutely nothing. You just push a button and that's it. Right, so um, we, I, I took this uh, example uh, to, uh, for, for the demo because it's quite uh, both simple and classic. It's a very classic problem, optimization problem, the knapsack problem. So if you don't know it, imagine that you have a knapsack, okay, with uh, a given capacity like 15 kilos and you want to uh, put uh, many objects in, in, this, uh, in this sack 
So you have here five uh, types of object and for each type of object you have, I don't know, like, let's say 10 or 15, 15 objects uh, of each type. Um, each type of object has a weight and a, a, a price, a, a cost or a value. Um, so the goal here is to have the higher uh, value, possible value in your, in your knapsack. Um, in, in such a way that uh, you cannot uh, go beyond this capacity of uh, 15 blocks. Okay, so let's do that uh, with some code. So here I already, yeah, black screen. I already uh, wrote uh, some, uh, some classes here uh, for this uh, knapsack problem and we will just write what is necessary. Uh, just to not have a, a too long video. So let's start by the uh, capacity constraint. Um, so you see that here I'm declaring my own uh, class that will inherit from the uh, constraint class uh, within Ghost. And I need here uh, to know what is the capacity of the stack and uh, also the list of uh, the weights of all objects of type, type of objects I uh, plan to, uh, to put into the bag, right? And we just need here to give the logic of the uh, error function. All right, so uh, for uh, the capacity constraint here, what we need? We need to first compute uh, the total uh, weight uh, of uh, the object that we put into the bag. So we'll need something uh, like, let's say, total weight, right? It's equal to uh, zero at the beginning. Then for uh, size t i, uh, for all variables here, what I need is to uh, add the uh, number of, uh, so it's get value to, uh, to know how, what is the, the value of the is variable among, among all, all variables in, in the constraint. Um, times the weight of the uh, highest type of object, right? Okay, so by doing this here, I have the total weight of objects that I put into the bag. Let's start by the COP version. So what I want to know with this capacity constraint is, uh, does this total weight um, is this total weight below the capacity or above? And uh, if it's below, it's okay. If it's above, it's not okay. So uh, let's uh, just do, uh, yeah, sure. Um, let's do a return. So we, uh, we test total, is total weight below uh, less than or equals to uh, the capacity? So if it's the case, everything is okay. So you return zero, meaning uh, there is no problem. And otherwise you return a positive value like one, for instance. So this is a COP version. It's just telling you, the constraint is just telling you, yes, it's okay, so return zero, or it's not okay, return something higher than zero. And that's it. So here it's over for the uh, capacity uh, constraint. Um, so we have an objective function, right? So let's see objective. Um, the objective function is to maximize the uh, total uh, value uh, inside the bag. So it's, uh, uh, we need to declare an objective class that will inherit from uh, maximize because we want to maximize the value. And actually, you know what? I will do a copy past because it's almost the same thing. Finally, for the objective function, here in the cost to compute the cost, we need well, maybe not that. 
we need to compute the total value inside the bag and uh, and this is done by just considering sorry considering the values and that's it and return total value okay so we just compute uh, the total value of uh, all objects uh, within the bag and we return it and that's it so this is also done for the objective function so now uh, we need to see uh, the, the builder the model builder uh, to declare the variables the constraints and the objective function and just forget about the auxiliary data i will explain that later um so for this builder actually so we need to declare our variables so if you remember we have five type of objects um, so we will uh, need five variables and uh, let's say that uh, we have as a domain every values from 0 to 15 so in that case I could declare one by one each variable of course but uh, this is tedious because uh, all variables are quite similar so there is something a shortcut to create several variables at once it's create n variable where i specify i want five variables and the first value in the domain is zero and in total i need every values from 0 to 15 so I need 16 values in their domain and that's it here I declare my five variables uh, to declare my constraint so we just have one constraint so far the capacity constraint so we need uh, to add it into a, a vector the vector uh, constraint um, so we need to push back uh, uh, a smart pointer of, uh, of uh, this constraint so make sure uh, it's ks capacity <clears throat> and what I need in this is constructor so let's check the constructor ks capacity we need uh, the variables the vector variables we need to know the what the capacity is and the so auxiliary data here is all data uh, that uh, concern the uh, type of objects so uh, the vector of the prices uh, their values and their uh, vector of uh, weights and this is something i already defined here um, it's it's not really important to to, uh, uh, to see details about that so we need uh, the set of variables which is pre-declared into a model builder uh, we need the capacity so we said 15 uh, kilograms and we need so the uh, auxiliary data uh, which is so the vector of values and weights that i uh, declared right and as an objective function so there is just one objective function so nothing to need to uh, uh, to to push it's not a vector here it's just an object so ks objective and i believe that i just need the variables and the uh, auxiliary, auxiliary data because I, I need to know the vector of, uh, of values of uh, each object type and that's it actually here we have our we declare our model uh, for the uh, knapsack problem so now we need to uh, well write a, a main function right so uh, we need here uh, what we need we need to declare the uh, ks builder uh, let's say builder so this is the object uh, to build uh, the model of our problem um we call ghost sorry ghost uh, so we we call a, a solver ghost and we give the builder as a parameter so we give 
something which is able to build a model of our problem to the solver. Um, before calling the, uh, the method uh, solve uh, within the solver, we actually need two things. We need uh, something like uh, yeah, a, a, a double uh, variable to, uh, to get the, the total cost or the, 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 well, the value outputted by the solver and also a vector well, a vector of int for uh, to uh, get the, the solution that has been found by the solver and then I can compute uh, solve by giving post and solution um, so after that line, uh, the value of cost will be uh, the uh, optimal value found by, by the solver and the solution will be the list of uh, values uh, for each variable. Okay, and uh, I need a timeout. Uh, so to, to tell, uh, to give a time budget to the solver, okay, you, you have, let's say, one second to find a solution, right? And uh, after one second, you just stop and you output the, the best solution you found so far. Okay, and then we should have everything, I guess. Uh, so uh, let's try compiling the stuff. I have this, I guess, yeah, it was a line that I used. There is a warning, uh, yeah, no written statement for all diff. Yeah, but this, this is normal because I didn't declare all diff yet. Okay. And so if I run knapsack here, we have, so you can see that here, the time budget is uh, 1000 milliseconds. So one second. Um, and uh, there is no satisfaction error, meaning that a solution, a correct solution has been found. And the optimal value uh, is uh, that has been found is uh, 24 with actually that uh, number of, uh, of, uh, of uh, variables so for the first type of object we took zero uh, zero objects of that time zero object of type one three of type two uh, of type yeah type, type three actually because it's one two three so three of type three eight of type four and y one of type uh, five. Okay, and this is giving 20, uh, 24. So 24 is not the optimal, uh, the, the best value. The best value is uh, 36. Uh, so if I run a couple of time here, 23, uh, 23, you can see that it's not, ow, oh, in interesting. This is really high, it's, you should consider it as infinite because actually there is an error here satisfaction error and uh, yeah that is clearly going above the capacity of the site okay so what we should do here um, we have here declare the uh, uh, constraint optimization problem version of the capacity constraint uh, it's simple to do but it's not very efficient. Um, Ghost has been optimized to handle EFOP and uh, EFSP uh, problems, which you will see uh, will be clearly more efficient uh, to, to, to solve these kind of, of problems rather than uh, CSP and COP. So let's do that. How to model uh, an EFOP? So the difference with a COP um, a COP here, you just return zero if the constraint is satisfied and something higher than zero if the constraint is not satisfied. But that's it. Um, you can be close to be a solution or far away to be a solution, you will output the same thing. If it's not a solution, it's not a solution. But you can, okay, if up, the idea is uh, to be uh, sharper than this. So you still return zero if uh, everything is okay um, but otherwise you return a, a, a value so uh, and the so it's weight the higher the value and 
uh, the farther uh, you uh, are to be a solution. So here, if the total weight is below capacity or equals to capacity, then we output zero, meaning there is no problem. Otherwise, um, if this is slightly higher than capacity, it will output a small value. If this is really higher than capacity, it will output a high value. And that's it, actually. Here, we defined an IFOP instead of a COP, and you will see that it will be clearly, clearly more efficient. So observe that I just changed that. I didn't change anything into the builder. I didn't change anything into uh, the main, the main uh, program. I just do that. I recompile the stuff, and you will see the difference. All right. It's an old computer. Good. Um, so here we have, hey, the optimal, 36, right? It's uh, 0, 0, 3, 0, 3. Okay. I run it again. Again, the optimal. Again, again, the optimal, right? It's clearly more efficient. And actually, we want the gun is, is a lot. Let's do 100 milliseconds, right? All right. Uh, recompile the stuff and on that computer it should I guess it should find half of the time the optimal solution uh, within uh, 100 milliseconds so you can see that it's clearly uh, faster uh, the time budget is uh, 100 milliseconds again this is the optimal solution run it again again the optimal solution and again, again the optimal solution. So in 10, uh, 10 times faster uh, than the, a COP version, it's able to find better solution. So definitely, if you have the choice, if you can define your problems as a NIFOP instead of a COP, you will have uh, really better results quicker. Okay. Um, so this knapsack problem is actually quite easy. Let's spice it up a bit uh, by adding a new constraint. So let's say that I want, uh, in addition of the capacity constraint, I want that the number of each type of object must be different to each other. So I cannot add, let's say, uh, two uh, objects of type X and two objects of type Y. It's all number of uh, objects that I add uh, in my in my bag must be different. Um, okay, so for this I need to uh, define the uh, an all different uh, constraint. Uh, so uh, let's write. Uh, so le let's just do the uh, if version here. It will be simpler. So what I need to do, I need to count finally how many objects uh, or, uh, or how many variables share the same, the same value. So uh, to do this, uh, size ti is equal to zero, uh, i is uh, less than uh, variables size minus one. Plus, 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 I, I do the same, a second loop with J, J, uh, which starts by, uh, after, sorry, after I, uh, J, this time, until the end, and J plus plus, right. And so, I need to test if the value of the is variable get value is equal to uh, the value of the js variable then I, ha I have a problem so I increment count and that's it and I return count okay uh, it's maybe the, the simplest way to define the all different uh, there are several ways to, to compute it, but this is maybe the, the simplest, not the most efficient, but the simplest way to uh, define an error function for uh, all different. All right, so I added a constraint, so I need to add 
it into my model. Um, so here we need to uh, add an old diff constraint, take the variables and uh, I think auxiliary data. I need to check that. Uh, what about the? Oh no, just variables. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't need the, the values of the weights. Okay. Um, all right. So that's it. I, I did the all different constraint into my model. Uh, again, just observe that uh, I do not change anything to the main program. I will recompile everything here. And uh, let's run the program. So here, so here is, is clearly more difficult. So uh, most of the time on that computer, actually, yeah, I, I think uh, within 100 milliseconds, this old computer is not able to uh, solve this, uh, this problem. So it will, you will al always see an, uh, a satisfaction error here. And so you will also see this infinite value uh, for the optimization cost. Uh, why? Because here uh, I have zero and zero, so this is forbidden. This is uh, the twice the same value, so this is forbidden by the all different constraint. I run it again. Again, there is a problem because uh, uh, where ah yeah again zero here and zero here, so I, I can. Again, the render. Um, so clearly, this is too much uh, for this computer, right? So if that happens, actually, you can do something. Uh, you don't need to to change the model. What you can do is is um, to define some options, right? Such that within options, parallel runs is equal to true and you give these options to the solver right um so um, for, for the runs that i did before you can see that here the parallel search is false right so uh it was sequential search uh on just one core if i just enable this option by doing this parallel runs um, and without specifying how many cores I, I, I want to use to uh, to solve uh, this problem uh, then uh, ghost will check how many cores are available on my on the machine so here on this machine I have a CPU with uh, four cores so he it will use uh, four threads uh, to to solve uh, to solve this problem. Um, so I need to recompile everything. And just uh, all the stuff that you have here. Uh, usually you is is not outputted by by Ghost. Here it's outputted because I ask uh, I add this uh, this macro uh, to uh, to get uh, all data here. But uh, of course usually nothing is outputted and uh, you have just to. Uh, uh, to use these uh, cost and solution values uh, changed by the solver within your, your program. Um, right, so let's run it. So you can see that this time here parallel search is true and we find a solution. And 25, 25 is the optimal solution for this problem with uh, the all different constraints. So you can see that zero, one, two, three, four. Indeed, everything is different. And I think on that computer, maybe half or maybe two thirds of the time, I should uh, find a solution. Maybe sometimes, yeah, okay. See, sometimes it was not able to find a solution. Uh, but most of the time, it's able to find a solution and it's the optimal solution. So it's pretty cool. All right, so that's conclude this uh, uh, demo uh, on Ghost. <clears throat> I invite you also to read the tutorial uh, on the uh, wiki section uh, of the uh, Ghost uh, GitHub repo. Uh, it's uh, complementary to this video. It's also on the uh, knapsack problem, but uh, modeled uh, differently. 
And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to drop me an email and I will be glad to answer uh, your questions. See you.